Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Big Daddy Top Hat here. If there are two things I love, it's handhelds and handhelds around the world. And when it comes to handhelds, there have been few ever made that have had as much depth and quality to them as what can be found on the Game Boy Advance. So to celebrate this fact tonight, I am going to be using resources from some of my previous videos on the system to deliver to you an epic experience showcasing over 100 of the very best games the Game Boy Advance has to offer. The platform really is one of the all time greats, so without further ado, let's jump straight in. Yeah! We shall start this video by talking about CT Special Forces. This series of games are run and gun and have a similar playstyle and aesthetics to that of the Metal Slug games. These are fun, short, pick up and play experiences by Light and Shadow Productions that are perfectly programmed for short spurts of gaming on the go. Rebel Star Tactical Command, released by Namco, is considered by many to be a sleeper hit for the Game Boy Advance platform. The game is designed by Julian Gollop, who designed UFO Unknown, which appeared on the Amiga CD32. In this tactical role-playing game, you control a squad of single character units and must accomplish various goals. The game features the basic premise of trying to free the human race from alien enslavement in the year 2117. All in all, another interesting title amongst the GBA's arsenal. Another game I have chosen to feature on this list is Street Fighter Alpha 3. Sure, there are superior ports of this arcade classic out there on systems such as the Sega Saturn for example, but this was an impressive port for a handheld system at the time of its release. The game is scaled down and is missing some of the content from its home console counterparts. However, Street Fighter Alpha 3 does a decent job of providing the Street Fighter experience on the go. Certainly a lot better job than Street Fighter 2 did for the original Game Boy anyway. Yuck. Ninja Cop, known as Ninja 5.0 outside of PAL regions, is an action platforming video game developed by Hudson Soft. The game mixes a perfect blend of combat and platforming while simultaneously paying homage to the many great ninja games of the 8-bit era. At the time of release, the game was critically loved by journalists everywhere. However, sadly, this never translated into making the game popular or resulted in many sales. Due to all of this, the game is amongst the most expensive and sought after on the GPA. Not long after talking about Alpha 3, I may as well mention Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, which I may add may be the most contrived name I have heard for a game since New Super Smash Bros. U Deluxe Edition. This game is yet another example of a Capcom arcade game seeing a decent port over to the world of handheld. After all, high quality puzzle games have and always will be perfect experiences to play on the move. Think how much fun we all had with Tetris back in the day for example. In my last GBA video, I included Final Fantasy IV and Final Fantasy VI, and many people were sad to see the exclusion of five from my list. Well here it is on my new alternative top 50 list. Final Fantasy V has never quite reached the same level of popularity as 4 or 6, simply for in my opinion failing to see a release on the Super Nintendo in the West full stop. The game features most of the same bells and whistles as the other two titles and as a European who failed to see all three of these games released in his region on the SNES, I failed to see that much different with this game compared to the others. I suppose you could make a case for the story being slightly less memorable, but the music, battle mechanics and exploration are as good as ever. Drill Dozer is a top notch action platformer released in the year 2005. Published by Nintendo, but developed by Pokemon creators Game Freak. The game is one of only two titles that feature a built in rumble pack into the cartridge on the platform. Throughout this game, you play through 17 huge stages, chopped with obstacles, enemies, and puzzles, which force you to use your drill dozer's drill in a variety of different ways. Jill's Quest is a fantastic platforming game released in a time period where 3D gaming had a total stranglehold over home console gaming. So you could easily argue that this is one of the greatest 2D platformers from the time period. Tales of Fantasia is the first game of many in the classic Tales series of JRPGs. The original game featured exclusively on the Super Famicom in Japan, but was ported and translated to English for a worldwide release a few years later. Bearing in mind all the sequels this title has spawned, this JRPG by Wolf Team's influence is unquestionable. 
Some even proclaim this title to be the greatest role-playing game of all time on its release. All in all, it features many of the explorational and story tropes of the genre. However, its linear motion battle system sets this game apart. Basically, this means the fights take place on two-dimensional terrains that stretch wider than just a single screen, which really changes things up a little bit. It is really cool that this game finally saw a release outside of Japan on the Game Boy Advance. Game & Watch Gallery Advance, known outside PAL regions as Game & Watch Gallery 4, is, like its predecessors, a collection of mini-games that first featured on the early Game & Watch handheld devices. This addictive game features two graphical styles, one of which uses characters from the Super Mario Bros. series, the other more in line with the look of the original Game & Watch titles. All in all, this features 11 different games and is very pick up and play on long train or plane journeys. The Mega Man Battle Network series debuted on the GBA, with a whole plethora of entries in the series. This RPG spin-off to the original Mega Man series takes place in a completely separate continuity, where computing itself advanced instead of robots. The series uses a hybrid action RPG card battle system. Battle screens feature 6x3 grids, with each character initially controlling half of the playing field, which can be modified by battle chips. The player must choose 30 chips, which act as a deck for each battle, and is refilled after each battle ends. The Battle Network series remains a cult favourite, however, it does not appear to be mentioned heavily by the mainstream gaming media these days. The Game Boy Advance is the perfect platform for tactical role-playing games, and Final Fantasy Tactics Advance is another great game from this same genre in this list. In this game, the player assembles a clan of characters and controls their actions over grid-like battlefields. Players are mostly free to decide the classes, abilities and statistics of their characters. The game is widely regarded to feature an outstanding combination of music, graphics, gameplay and storyline, all in all making this title an undersung classic. Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure is a game that lets us play through the events of the original Dragon Ball anime. The game features a number of different play modes and 30 different playable characters. The meat and potatoes of this game is the story mode, which featured side-scrolling platforming, beat-em-up stages, nimba shooter stages, and one-on-one -on -one fighter-style stages against bosses. In just this play mode alone, this game really mixes things up and does a great job of covering the entirety of the anime story. To be honest, I am not really sure why this game does not get more praise, particularly when you take into account how popular this franchise is. Final Fight 1 for the GBA was developed by Suntec and released in 2001. Characters and background designs are lifted from the SNES version of the game rather than the arcade. However, in this version, you can play as all three characters. The industrial area is also reinstated that was absent from the SNES rendition. The Street Fighter Alpha 3 renditions of Cody and Guy are also featured as hidden playable characters, and the maximum number of on-screen enemies was increased. All in all, this is a rather unique version of the classic arcade beat-em-up, another decent job by Capcom. Believe it or not, there is an entire trilogy of decent undersung Spyro games on the Game Boy Advance platform. People never shut up about the PlayStation trilogy, but rarely talk about the offerings on the handheld Nintendo platform. All three of these games are decent affairs and offer interesting isometric gameplay. The games consist of releasing fairies from their prisons and progressing from realm to realm to defeat Grendor. Give these games a chance as they are a breath of fresh air in the world of platforming. Capcom's traditional role-playing games Breath of Fire and Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo can also both be experienced on the Game Boy Advance. Whilst critically acclaimed, both of these can sometimes be overlooked amongst a high level of great JRPG competition on both the SNES and GBA alike. These grindy fantasy games are really the perfect experience to play on the go, as you fight your way through these turn-based adventures. Thinking about the GBA, it probably has the greatest selection of strategy RPGs out on any handheld gaming console ever, and Shining Force Resurrection of the Dark Dragon just continues to add to this legacy. This game is a full-on remake of the first Shining Force game for the Mega Drive, which was the first game from this genre to appear on a Western games console, beating Fire Emblem to the punch in our own culture. Amongst the updates includes free cartridge saves, a new battle card system, and new art and updated graphics.
The Boktai Trilogy is a series of action-adventure role-playing video games released by Konami. In this title, you take control of a vampire hunter who uses a powerful weapon called the Gun del Sol that can fire bolts of sunlight at enemies. The game is novel and different as it makes use of a light sensor on the cartridges that encourage players to play these titles in direct sunlight to force you outside. Think of this as somewhat of an innovative precursor to Pokemon Go. In an effort to cure the world of spotty basement dwellers within the gaming community, the game's combat focuses on stealth and the challenges upped depending on if you have spent time playing outside or not. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories is an action role-playing game by Square Enix that serves as an intermediary between the two larger PlayStation 2 games. Though not as successful as the other Kingdom Hearts games, it received positive reviews and sold well. It was praised for its story, graphics and even its inclusion of full motion video. Which is something you do not hear mentioned very much, especially when it comes to Game Boy Advance games. Exploration is isometric, and the combat uses a card-based battle system executed in real time, all in all creating a rather unique experience on the system. Lady Sia is a platforming game with action and adventure elements that features a beautiful art style. The game features a good balance of standard platforming paired with final fight-like combat. Further to this, the game is scattered with puzzle elements to keep you on your toes, which mixes up gameplay elements even further. At one point in time, a sequel was planned, but this was never to be due to an overall lack of interest. Monster Rancher Advance, like the title suggests, revolves around creating, raising and fighting monsters. This game is often rather unfairly compared to Pokemon, however the Monster Rancher series handles quite differently as these games are basically animal breeding simulators. In the game you take the role of a breeder and must raise monsters, train them, keep them healthy, exercise them and maximise their abilities before they meet their untimely Tamagotchi-like demise. However, ultimately though, you do battle them, which I guess is where the Pokemon comparisons come in. Tactics Ogre the Knights of Lodis is even more tactical role-playing gold which can be found amongst the GBA's library. In this game, published by Atlas, the player takes part in party-based tactical combat on an isometric playing field. Characters can be hired or acquired in combat and there are interchangeable classes and a wide array of weapons, equipment and magic spells. It really does seem like the GBA is the system to have for tactical-based fun. Bomberman Tournament, known as Bomberman Story in Japan, can be celebrated due to the fun and simple gameplay which overall the Bomberman series is famous for. However, the game has an extremely unique twist which separates it from a Bomberman pack. In fact, that it is a full-blown Bomberman RPG. This is the Bomberman RPG no one wanted nor asked for. However, despite all of this, the game works pretty well. The action RPG genre and Bomberman actually blend fairly well partially due to the fact that traditionally they are both 2D top-down affairs. Zone of the Enders, The Fist of Mars, eh? You will never guess what genre this title belongs to. Yes, that's right, another bloody tactical role-playing game. There are just so many on here worth a play. In this game, published by Konami, you control various mecha, which perform attacks, optimizing different abilities to exploit your enemy's weaknesses. Missions are varied, from protecting targets to destroying your combatants. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is not the first GBA Pokemon game most people would think of when it comes to the Game Boy Advance. But Mystery Dungeon games vary from the traditional entries in the series, as the player assumes the role of an actual Pokemon, rather than as the trainer for a change. Gameplay is based on the classic roguelike game, with the player navigating the randomly generated dungeons with their Pokemon team. Movement and actions are turn-based, and the player can use basic attacks, Pokemon moves and items. Overall, this is not your typical Pokemon related experience. DK King of Swing is an often forgotten game starring Donkey Kong. In this game, DK Rule declares himself the jungle hero in a similar scenario to that of Bluster the Benevolent from the amazing Donkey Kong Country TV series. In this game, you puzzle and jam your way through a number of play modes, swinging from various pegboards to progress. The game has a great roster of characters, allowing you to play as DK, Diddy, Dixie, Funky, Wrinkly, and even King K. Rool himself. And this was in the pre-Smash Brothers Ultimate days.
Prince of Persia The Sands of Time is one of the most striking looking platforming games in the entire GBA library. The game may share its title with its living room console counterpart, however this game is a throwback to the Prince of Persia gameplay styles of old. This title though mixes things up a tad more than the classics by including welcome swashbuckling combat elements. All in all, another underrated game. I am sure all of you have probably played House of the Dead by Sega, but what about Pinball of the Dead by Sega? Remember Pokemon Pinball? Well this game is the House of the Dead equivalent, with of course House of the Dead themed tables. The game has three tables based on locations from the games. The player launches the ball into the tables via the skill shot where a crosshair moves onto a zombie and bonus points can be earned by successfully hitting a zombie. There are also a range of bosses to defeat to mix up gameplay further in this rarely talked about title. Shining Soul 2 is an action RPG developed by Nextech and published by Sega. The game is both the sequel to Shining Soul and a spin-off within the Shining Fall series. Through this game you can crawl through dungeons and hack and slash in a similar way to that of Diablo. In this adventure you make your way through a number of different dungeons with an accompanying storyline to tie the whole experience together. In Sigma Star Saga, published by Atari, you explore an overworld in a hybrid science fiction role playing game space shooter. However obviously, and more importantly, you play through a number of shooter stages. These side scrolling shooter portions of the game were encountered as random battles in a brisk change of pace from other titles that displayed these sort of gameplay elements and tropes. As expected, this is amongst the most unique games on the GBA. Double Dragon Advance is a remake of the 1987 arcade classic Double Dragon game, however the game also includes elements from both the sequels and the home console variants of the title. All in all though, Bimmy and Jimmy are back in more classic side-scrolling beat-em-up fun, and this is another decent addition amongst the cornucopia of combat-focused Double Dragon adventures. Tokyo Extreme Racer stands out amongst the Game Boy Advance's library as it features 3D polygons as opposed to the 2D aesthetics found in most games. Sure, the game doesn't even look to be on the Sony PlayStation's level in terms of 3D graphics, but it is interesting to see this attempted at all on the platform. Tokyo Extreme Racer is a decent game, but all in all, it is the graphics in this game which makes it most intriguing. Whilst in the realms of 3D on the GBA, we also got Killer 3D Pool, which once again is a departure from the usual graphical style of the system. As the title suggests, this game is of course a pool title rendered in 3D, and it is a decent one at that. I seriously doubt Killer 3D Pool is a game many would put in their essential top games to play on the platform, but if you fancy playing a little bit of pool on the go, in 3D, then Killer 3D Pool is definitely the game for you. If we think of the GBA, Fighters is not the first genre of games many of you would think of, but as demonstrated by Street Fighter Alpha 3 earlier, fun is to be had when it comes to these sort of games on the system. King of Fighters EX Neo Blood gives you a great portable King of Fighters experience and arguably eclipses the entries of the series which can be found on the Neo Geo Pocket Color. SNK Fun on the GBA is often forgotten about. Everyone talks about the Kirby's Dreamland games found on the original Game Boy, but Kirby and the Amazing Mirror for the Game Boy Advance rarely seems to crop up on people's radars. Unlike other Kirby games, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror features a maze layout and is traversed in a similar playstyle to that of Metroid and Castlevania games, so therefore you can place this game straight into the minor willy genre. So, therefore, if you have ever fancied playing a Metroid game starring Kirby, the Amazing Mirror is certainly worth a look at. Mario Party Advance is the first handheld entry in this somewhat oversaturated gaming franchise, due to the plethora of entries in this series. This is a title that is often overlooked and forgotten today. The game stands out from other Mario Party games due to the 2D aesthetics, overall contributing to a unique gameplay experience. Captain Tsubasa can be found on the GBA, which is an entry from a series of games that functions as a football role playing game hybrid of sorts. This unique mix of gameplay may even make the title palatable for people who are not fans of football, or even potentially for football fans who are not into role playing games. 
This is a unique series everyone should make the effort to try out at least once. Yoshi's Universal Gravitation, known as Yoshi Topsy Turvy in North America, is a platforming game which graphically looks extremely similar to Yoshi's Story for the Nintendo 64. The game is unique as it features a built-in motion control tilt center which can be used to manipulate the game's environment. This is the same technology found in WarioWare Twisted and of course later in the Nintendo Wii. In this game you can tilt the entire environment to assist Yoshi to solve puzzles and complete stages. Legend of Starfy for the GPA sadly remained exclusive to Japan however fan translations of the game can be experienced now. The game consists of mostly platforming and Starfy can run, jump and execute spin attacks. As expected you play through multiple stages and defeat bosses at the end of each level. It is really hard to see why this would have failed to release outside of Japan. My only inference is perhaps it is just too cutesy, however that has never really stopped Kirby and others coming here. Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town is a remake of Harvest Moon Back to Nature and in this game the player is a farmer whose goal it is to make a profit from the farm he runs by producing crops and raising livestock. This farm simulation role playing game is vastly different from the majority of other games which can be found on the GBA and all in all is a gaming franchise which has always been beloved by many. Gradius Galaxies is a great little space shooter for the system. In this game the player takes control of Vic Viper's spacecraft and sets off on a quest to obliterate hordes of enemies. The game features traditional Gradius elements and mixes them with a more modern twist. In this game you have a variety of weapons to choose from to further mix up the fun in space. Steel Empire is another side scrolling shooter available on the GBA. The game originally popped up on the Sega Mega Drive and was years later ported over to the Nintendo handheld platform. The game's unique aesthetics is of a low tech nature with it being set in the late 19th century of an alternative world making it vary greatly from the space style and art direction found in most shooters. Konami Crazy Racers is a fantastic love letter of a game to Super Mario Kart Super Circuit or Mario Kart Super Circuit which can also be found on the GBA. The game literally mirrors Mario Kart with races taking place between 8 characters riding go-karts. Classic Konami characters are playable in this game such as Goemon, Vic Viper and bloody Dracula himself. Rhythm Tengoku is a game very similar to WarioWare in both graphics and playstyle. The game features very simple controls and a very basic art style. The game has 8 sets of stages which each feature 6 rhythm games. Like many games on this list the game is very unique and is somewhat underappreciated amongst today's YouTube echo chamber. Shaman King Master of Spirits is a metroidvania slash minor willy style platforming adventure video game developed by Konami. So being a Konami title it is basically a Castlevania game just with different characters so in some ways you could even think of this as a secret Castlevania game with an anime skin stuck over the top of it. The game follows the story of a young man known as Yo in his guest to stop the guardian of demons from being resurrected by a gang of road shamans. Even the story itself sounds very Castlevania. From one anime game to the next, next up we have Yu-Gi-Oh! Eternal Duelist Soul, a unique card game for the GBA. The game is fun and certainly very different from any other titles I've talked about today. Away from this there are a number of different Yu-Gi-Oh! card games to enjoy on this system if you want to try out something new. Seema the Enemy is a role playing video game developed by Neverland. It follows the story of Ark and Ivy, two aspiring gate guardians. The game relies on an interesting combat system where you must direct 14 party members to different switches. All in all making this game very unique in its mechanics and another somewhat hidden gem amongst the GBA's huge fantastic library. SD Gundam Forces consists of side scrolling hack and slash platforming confined with some auto scrolling shooter stages. The game features great music, bright graphics and is probably too Japanese to be included in the majority of top gaming lists. Taking the lack of western appeal this game has aside though, this is a fun game here which should be probably played by many people. We once again return to the field of tactical role playing games, this time with Onimusha Tactics. The GBA really is the king for these kind of games. The player is presented with a 3 quarter camera view of a detailed gridded battlefield. The point of the game is to defeat the opposing team of opponents and improve the player character with experience points gained in battle by defeating enemies. So overall exactly what you want and expect from this sort of game. 
Sega Arcade Gallery is a compilation of four Sega Arcade games ported to the Game Boy Advance. The game includes old favourites such as Afterburner, Super Hang On, Outrun and Space Harrier. It is cool to see the Sega titles located on one Game Boy Advance cartridge, thus making this game a great procurement for anyone's GBA library. Pocky and Rocky with Becky is the third entry in the Pocky and Rocky series following the first two games which appeared on the Super Nintendo. The Pocky and Rocky games are cult favourites and I would gather it may be a surprise to some of you that a third entry can be found amongst the Game Boy Advance's library, which is of no surprise at all really as the GBA offers such a sea of quality that some titles like this can sometimes get lost in the shuffle. The GBA is really something very special indeed. Mario Advanced is an enhanced port of the remake of Super Mario Bros. 2, known as Super Mario Bros. USA in Japan, which was reskinned as Doki Doki Panic, which serves as part of the Mario All Stars compilation on the Super Nintendo. Now that's a bloody mouthful to try and explain. This game has been remade and ported a lot over the years, however, the GBA version of this title is probably the best version of them all. The game served as a launch title for the system and was a very aesthetically pleasing game to witness debut on the handheld. It felt like a massive breath of fresh air from the simple 8-bit Game Boy. The game is a Western Mario All-Stars version of Super Mario Bros. 2, packed with even more content than before. There has been changes made to every level, there are now 5 red coins to collect in every stage and there is even a new post-game mode where you have to find the hidden Yoshi egg on each stage. This game is so much more than just a lazy port. Rayman Advance is another title which was impressively ported over to the small screen in the very early days of the GBA. Rayman was one of the very best titles the Atari Jaguar had to offer back in the day, so once again it was amazing to play such a beautiful side-scrolling platformer on the go. The game is a lot of fun and such a colourful different sort of game to that of which we were getting on home consoles at the time with their boring 50 shades of grey. Sonic, in my opinion, made an even more impressive debut on the GBA than that of Super Mario himself. Throughout the Game Boy Advance's life cycle, all of the Mario games were enhanced ports. Sonic on the other hand featured in an all new adventure. Sonic Advance sees Sonic return to the realm of 2D side-scrolling, just like in his prime back in the Sega Mega Drive days. Once again the game looked stunning and was a massive change of pace from his clunky escapades in the adventure series at home. Wade Hickston's Counterpunch is a fantastic love letter to the Punch-Out series. The game features a very similar style of gameplay and absolutely stunning aesthetics. Counterpunch often feels like you are playing an actual cartoon, rather than a simple handheld video game. The game is sometimes as tough as nails, but the art style and humour alone for me make this amongst the most underrated games on the whole platform. Mario Golf Advance Tour is a fun yet bizarre game. As rather than a golf game like you would expect, the game is a bloody fully blown JRPG with a story and a world to explore. However, instead of defeating monsters to gain experience points, your character must win rounds of golf to grow levels. Refreshingly, you do not play as a Mario character either. You pick between whether you want to play as a random boy or girl as you go on your quest to become the next Tiger Woods. Truly bizarre really, and not the game you would expect by simply looking at the box art. I love these odd Mario sports RPGs though, they are a great breath of fresh air. Gunstar Future Heroes, known as Gunstar Super Heroes outside of Europe, is a fully blown sequel to the cult classic known as Gunstar Heroes on the Mega Drive. Treasure are back with a game which may as well have been called Gunstar Heroes 2, and the game features a very similar playstyle to the original. You could make a case for this game being just as good as its famous predecessor, however, fortunately for game collectors, this title is available at a fraction of the cost, another amazing hidden gem in the system's library. The Mega Man Zero series is the sequel to the Mega Man X series and is set about a century after these events. Mega Man Zero is a two dimensional action platform game with run and gun elements that places a heavy emphasis on memorising boss patterns and selecting the correct weapons to use against enemies. The game differs from Mega Man X games in that all the levels serve as part of a larger world and you can freely explore these areas once the respective missions in each area are completed. Like Gunstar Super Heroes, Mega Man Zero does not seem to get talked about on the same level as Mega Man X and I would really only put that down to handheld bias. 
Mario Kart Super Circuit may personally be my favourite Mario Kart game in the whole series. The game features a huge amount of content and was all around much bigger than what we got on the Super Nintendo and the Nintendo 64 before it. The game includes 40 different racetracks, which was a record for the franchise and even featured returns of tracks for the first time from older titles too. This gave me a huge wave of nostalgia at the time and was one of the first new games I can recall which celebrated and reinvented content from the 16-bit era of gaming. This game has so much stuff to achieve included that to this day I have never successfully managed to complete the whole game, whereas I managed to complete Mario Kart Double Dash on the GameCube in just the first week. Speaking of the 16-bit era, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past was ported from the Super Nintendo to the GBA. The game is argued by many to be the greatest game in the Super Nintendo's library, and a version on the Game Boy Advance's hardware plays just as fantastically as the original. The game also came packed with Four Swords Adventure, the first multiplayer Zelda experience. Another game that was finally ported over to the system was Final Fantasy VI. As a European, we never had any of the main series Final Fantasy titles released in the region until Final Fantasy VII, so Final Fantasy VI on the Game Boy Advance was my first personal playthrough of the game, and my god was it bloody good. Final Fantasy VI is easily one of the greatest JRPGs ever made, and the ability to play it on the go makes this version of the game just that little bit more sweeter. Alien Hominid is a run-and-gun side-scroller with one of the most unique art styles on the platform. If, back in the day, like myself, you used to browse Newgrounds.com, you would know this art style well as Alien Hominid is from the creators of Newgrounds. The game is a lot of fun to play, but it is even better to just admire how different this game looks to most other titles. The game stands out to this day, just as much as it did on release. The first Castlevania game on the Game Boy Advance was Circle of the Moon, which sees the return of the Metroidvania style, which was successfully implemented as well in this game as it was in Symphony of the Night on the Sony PlayStation. The game is long and challenging, and was quoted by reviewers at the time to be Konami's second symphony. The game's flaws has always been the amount of lighting in the game, but with modern front-lit screens, this criticism is no longer an issue, so the game is even better today than it was on release. Bubble Bobble Old and New features the original arcade version of Bubble Bobble along with a remake of the game with a fresh coat of paint. This version of the game is a fantastic way of experiencing this classic on the go, with two different art styles to choose from depending on your gaming taste. I was a fan of playing this game in the arcades as a child and love the game just as much today. Kuru Kuru Kururin is an old game where you play as a duck thing who pilots a helicopter sort of thing. In this game you must try your best to fly through courses whilst not clipping your wings on the walls around the edges. The game is both fun, challenging and frustrating, all in equal measures, and is once again one of the most unique games amongst the Game Boy Advance's system library. Mario Advance 2 is a port of Super Mario World, my personal favourite 2D side-scrolling Mario game of all time. The GBA version of this game is as great as ever, however, I was slightly disappointed with this game's lack of new features in comparison to that of what we got with the first Mario Advance port. If you stick the name Advance in a game's title, you kind of expected an advanced experience really. As much as I complain about this though, this game is still Super Mario World, and this was the first time we could experience this classic on a small screen. Advanced Guardian Heroes is the sequel to Guardian Heroes on the Sega Saturn, of all things. This is certainly a game I would imagine most would overlook, especially when you consider many people never even got round to trying out the fantastic Saturn title. The game received lacklustre reviews at the time, however I completely disagree with them, as I have always had nothing but fun with this title. The game is a great side-scrolling beat-em-up with role-playing game elements. If you're yet to try this one out, make sure you give it a go. Pokemon Emerald is a slightly enhanced version of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, the third generation of Pokemon games. Like with every main entry Pokemon game, the game is an all-time classic and an addictive experience which consists of trying to win battles and collecting Pokemon. I felt like these titles were a massive step down from Gold and Silver though, as you could no longer trade your Pokemon over from previous generations and the world was much much smaller with only 8 gyms to conquer as opposed to 16. 
Ruby and Sapphire was a huge step in the wrong direction for the franchise and the game sold comparatively poorly as a result. Ruby and Sapphire never even featured a full Pokedex, so it was not even possible to catch them all. Emerald tried its best to fix some of these problems, for example reintroducing the full Pokedex which came in use when trading with the new Pokemon from Fire Red and Leaf Green games. Overall, the third generation Pokemon games are the most flawed I have ever experienced, but then again they are only the worst games in one of the greatest handheld series of all time. So, despite my moaning, they are fantastic games, if you ignore all the other better entries in the series. Hence why it is still on this list. Advance Wars was a revelation for me at the time. It was like playing chess on steroids. This tactical role-playing war game is hugely, hugely addictive, and it becomes very easy to lose hours to this game very quickly. In this game, you move your pieces, which each feature various functions in order to destroy your opponent's pieces and capture their base. If I made a top 10 handheld games of all time list, I would have to include an entry from this fantastic series of games. Metroid Fusion is a full-blown Metroid game, and the first of its kind since Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo, another title in which many people howl as the greatest Super Nintendo game of all time. Personally, I think Metroid Fusion is an even greater game than that of its Super Nintendo counterpart, as the game just feels all around more intuitive, and all the controls in this one actually work. Super Metroid always wound me up a little bit for just how bad and hard it was to use the wall jump. Actually, no complaints like this for me with this one though. Metroid Fusion is my all-time favourite Metroid game. Wario Land 4 is a beautiful side-scrolling platform game which is graphically a massive step up from the Wario Land entries on the Game Boy Color. This is a fun, stunning 32-bit side-scroller that mostly focuses around looking for treasure throughout the game's variety of great levels. We may have not got a new Super Mario Bros. game on either the Game Boy Color or Advance for some reason, but at least Wario had our back. I love Wario, he is such a lovely man. Astro Boy is yet another game by Treasure for the GBA. This game's quality absolutely blew me away and the game kind of feels like the Sega Mega Drive classic that never was. The game is an absolutely amazing run and gun game which plays even better than the majority of Mega Man titles. It is quite amazing to see really that Mega Man was based on Astro Boy in the first place to see Astro Boy make a comeback and actually beat the Blue Bomber at his own game. Seriously though, this game is special and a must play for all. Golden Sun is a great little RPG brought to the Game Boy Advance by Camelot. This stunning game features great graphics, unique battle mechanics and good music to tie it all together. This was a fantastic early release on the platform and a game worth playing for any JRPG fetishist out there in the world. WarioWare Inc. was one of the most unique games I have ever experienced on release. The game consists of completing various 3 second long back to back micro games which in turn makes this all a bizarre yet pleasurable experience. Like Pokemon and Advance Wars, this too is one of the most addictive games I have ever played. My favourite feature in the game though was the retro inspired micro games. WarioWare Inc. was pushing the retro gaming nostalgia narrative before the word retro gaming even existed a truly special game. Sonic Advance 2 offers much of the same sort of experience as the first Sonic Advance game, however I would say the second entry probably has the edge in terms of level design. The game also introduces the playable character known as Cream, which to be fair is one of the better modern character designs in Sonic's hugely oversaturated universe. Sonic Advance 2 was the first entry I experienced in the Advance series, and personally I loved every minute of it. Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire is the direct sequel to the Pokemon Pinball game on the Game Boy Color and plays in much of the same ways too. This pinball title is extremely addictive as rather than just going after high scores like in most pinball games, in this game you must hatch, capture and evolve Pokemon along the way too, overall trying to complete your Pokedex. The game features fun bonus stages as well to further change up the gameplay. This game looks very simple on the surface, however once again this is one of the more addictive games on the platform. F-Zero Maximum Velocity was the first F-Zero game to feature on the GBA platform and is a fast paced decent racing game much like its predecessors. If you want to play an F-Zero game on the GBA platform this is the best offering of the three titles available. 
The game is not quite Mario Kart Super Circuit, but it is good fun nonetheless. Kirby's Nightmare in Dreamland is a 32-bit remake of Kirby's Adventure for the NES, probably the most impressive game that was available on the whole NES system. This is a fun platforming experience which was great to get in portable form, especially with the fantastic new coat of paint. In this game, Kirby can inhale various enemies so that he can steal their powers and use them for himself. A wonderful little game. Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance is the second GBA Castlevania game, which once again retains the Metroidvania gameplay style. The game features an array of more side scrolling goodness. This is all if you can overlook the horrible music the game has. As great in as the music is in this game though, the gameplay shines through as another fun Castlevania affair. Fire Emblem, the Blazing Blade, is simply known as Fire Emblem outside of Japan, as this was the first Fire Emblem game to be released outside of the country. This game was released due to characters' newfound popularity in the GameCube game Super Smash Bros. This game functions in a similar fashion to Advance Wars, as this is another tactical role-playing series by Intelligent Systems. Personally, I prefer the Advance Wars game from the GBA, but Fire Emblem puts a different twist on an incredible genre. Advance Wars 2 Black Hole Rising ramps everything up from its previous entry. The game offers much the same experience, although the game features more characters, a longer and more interesting story, and more importantly, the War Room. The War Room is extremely pick up and play, meaning that experienced players like myself can choose something challenging to do right from the off. Black Hole Rising is one of the greatest tactical role playing games ever. Mario Tennis Power Tour functions in the same way as the Mario Golf game does on the GBA. This is another crazy sports role playing game where you play as a random young protagonist who wants to make his way up to the top of the tennis world. Personally, I prefer this game over the golf one, but that could just be because I prefer the tennis game over golf in general. But different strokes for different folks. What you talking about Willis? Sword of Mana is an enhanced remake of Seiken Densetsu for the Game Boy, known as Final Fantasy Adventure in North America and Mystic Quest in Europe. The game has been completely remade from the ground up, in the stunning graphical style of Secret of Mana on the Super Nintendo. This is a fun, impressive looking game, and both this game and the Game Boy original both have their own merits. I would say try them both out if you're into your action RPGs. Klonoa Empire of Dreams is a sequel to Klonoa Moonlight Museum for Gunpei Yokoi's Bandai Wonderswan platform. This is a fun side-scrolling platforming game which features the same control mechanics as the Klonoa game on the PS1, where you must grab enemies to then use them to throw or jump to previously unreachable areas, a somewhat fun, underrated gem. Mega Man Zero 2 features much of the same tropes from the previous Mega Man Zero game and is yet another fine entry within this great run and gun series. It is also of note that all four Mega Man Zero games were later released on a compilation cartridge for the Nintendo DS, so there is a cheap affordable way to experience all of these quality games when you are out and about on the go. Mario Advance 3 is a re-release of the Yoshi's Island Super Mario World 2 for the Super Nintendo. Yoshi's Island is an excellent game and a fantastic addition to the GBA's already stellar library. However, once again it was slightly sad to see a lack of new and advanced features. This game is even closer to a straightforward copy and paste job than either of the previous Mario Advance titles. Still though, this is a Yoshi's Island game on the go, which was wonderful at the time and still is. Metal Slug Advance's gameplay is very similar to any other Metal Slug game, but with two new systems, the life system and the card system. The system is simply a life bar for the players and it replaces the extra lives from all of the other Metal Slug games. This game offers the usual high quality Metal Slug run and gun experience, but on the GBA for the very first time. Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red are remakes of the original Pokemon games for the Game Boy. I was extremely pleased to see these games released at the time after my complete disappointment with Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire versions. All of the original Pokemon were back, you know, the ones you actually liked. The game was an enhanced remake of the original, however it offered an all new post game experience where you could travel from island to island discovering Pokemon from the Gold and Silver universe. Apart from that, you could trade over Pokemon from Ruby and Sapphire, so you could try and collect all 386 Pokemon for the first time ever. 
Metroid Zero Mission is another enhanced remake, this time of the original Metroid game of the NES. The Game Boy Advance overall did a fantastic job of bringing to the table many enhanced versions of titles from Gaiman's past. The game retells the story of the original, but with Metroid Fusion-esque gameplay. The game is short, but the addition of new content makes this game overall worth a play. Mario vs Donkey Kong is the sequel to Donkey Kong released on the Game Boy in 1994. This game features a similar playstyle where you play as Mario, collecting keys to get through doors and completing many stages. Overall a very fun little title. WarioWare Twisted is another Wario game full of micro game madness. This late GBA release features built in technology in the cartridge so that you can play the game via tilting the GBA. This was the same sort of technology that would later go on to be used in the Wiimotes, so this was the first and only GBA title to feature motion control. The micro games in this title are a lot of fun and one of the few games that has to be experienced using original hardware rather than emulation. The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap is another late GBA release and is the only GBA Zelda exclusive. The game is played from a top-down perspective, much like Link's The Past. The main gimmick of this title was that Link could shrink down to the size of an ant, so that he could explore new undiscovered worlds. The game is good fun, but much shorter than a lot of other big Zelda games. Overall though, it is 100% worth a playthrough. Sonic Advance 3 is the third instalment in the Sonic Advance trilogy, and once again offers much as the same as the others. This is a decent platform in the fair, and no matter which game you pick out of the three, you are going to get a decent Sonic experience overall. Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones is once again yet another decent tactical role playing game amongst the GBA's deep library. In this game you take the role of royal siblings Erika and Ephraim, during separate campaigns as they fight hostile forces invading their homeland, along with allies acquired on your journey. This is another intelligent system game worth trying out. Castlevania Aria of Sorrow is the third Metroidvania style Castlevania game released on the Game Boy Advance. The storyline of this game is extremely odd, as it is a game about Count Dracula set in Japan in the year 2035. But if you could ignore how horrible the anime storytelling is in this game, there is a fun gameplay experience to be had underneath it all. Golden Sun The Lost Age gives you an experience very similar to the first game in the series. This is because the two titles were originally intended to be one game, but had to be split up due to the Game Boy Advance's hardware limitations. So if you had fun playing the first Golden Sun game, you need to play through this one as well really in order to get the whole Golden Sun experience. Mario Advance 4 is a port of the Super Mario All-Stars version of Super Mario Bros. 3. As a European, I just always made the assumption that this game was the laziest port yet, as it appeared to be just Super Mario Bros. 3, which is a great game nonetheless. However, apparently the rest of the world outside of Europe got an e-card reader, which allowed you to unlock all new levels for this title. I guess I am going to have to source a copy of this game from a different region down the line to experience this. Mega Man Zero 3 offers more run and gun Mega Man greatness just like all of the other Mega Man Zero games within the franchise. As I have mentioned already, I have no idea why this series does not receive more praise. My only assumption is the fact that it appeared on a handheld in an era where 2D gaming was not particularly fashionable in the first place. Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga is a full blown JRPG packed to the top with zany humour and tantalising gameplay, story and battle mechanics. Out of the many Mario JRPGs that have been made over the years, this title stands out as certainly one of the better offerings. But then again, this was still within the time frame where Mario JRPGs could do no wrong. As good as the Mario and Luigi series is, none of the game's sequels have quite matched the magic of this one. It really is something quite special really. Final Fantasy IV is well, Final Fantasy IV, a game we missed out on in Europe during its prime. The Game Boy Advance allowed many of us to experience this game for the first time, and equally and as importantly, it let us play this grindy game on the go. I think this is a toss up out of Final Fantasy 4 and 6 regarding which one is better, however both games have their own merits and credentials, contributing to both of them being amongst the best games the genre has ever offered. 
Mother 3 is the infamous Japan exclusive sequel to Earthbound, a game now that Nintendo fanboys have been screeching to see released worldwide for quite some time. Personally though, I do not give a crap if they ever release it, as the fan translated version does the job perfectly fine on its own. The game is an emotional roller coaster filled with fun, humour, happiness and sadness alike. This is a game that attempts to touch on all of your emotions, overall contributing to one of the most engaging playthrough experiences I have ever had. The game is all around leaps and bounds ahead of Earthbound, and arguably the greatest Game Boy Advance game of all time. So ladies and gentlemen, that was more than my top 100 greatest Game Boy Advance games. As a permanently passionate gamer, I am always looking to learn new things about my favourite piece of hardware. So, if you could identify any great games I failed to include in this list, then be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. I am sure there are at least one or two great games that I must have missed. If you want more Nintendo related list videos, why not check out a video I published earlier this year, looking at the top 100 Japan only Super Famicom games. And if you are feeling really exotic, I made a video for your pleasure about 50 Sega Saturn Japan exclusives too, so you may want to check that one out. I work on YouTube full time in part due to the amazing people who back this channel on Patreon, so special shout outs go out today to Sebastian Velez, Carl Johnson, The Murder of Crows, Heo Paulo Lopez, Joseph Rasmick, Doug Perkins, Corey R. Marsh Sr., Lou Johnson, BXL Gotham, Rowan Dinch, Evan Border, Philip Matt, Cambo Rambo 82, Azrael Rabakai, Keith Ferguson, Joaquin Varela, Prince Knight, Michael Cullix, Ago, Jordan Durant, TOG Driver, Angel Light 85, uh, Lefia Swanson, Timothy W. Haskins II, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Carlos Domingos, Glennie Glenn, Danny Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Sponge Matt B, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Tony Tran, Aaron McNamara, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Posty XL, Michael Hall, Wesley Sang, He, Ted Stickles, Langston Miller, New, Brian Barry, Sir Lagney, Stephen Lewis, Sarah Powell, Flaming Renee, Sarai, H. Al Sarai, Marvin Ariliga, Chris Cool, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Richard Stu Stewart, James McDonald, Crazy Yell, Dan Van Dammit, Adam Castin, Louis Fiant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Paul Elliott, Me Machine Dean, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Hans Christian, Craig Jenkins, Tom Elliott, Retroverse, Com, Casey Wright, Sid Spaces, Zai, Andrew Bazansky, and everyone else who continues to back this channel. You make ridiculous things like this just that little bit more possible. Thank you.